Hey everybody, Mr. Longo here, and we are going to talk about inverse trig with the unit circle in this video. Um, and at times it's a little bit tricky. I'm going to show you how to use your calculator as a backup. However, this is something that you might need to know how to do by hand for non-calculator sections of quizzes or tests, um, or when you get to pre-calc. Um, there are times where you're going to need to be able to do it, so I'm going to show you how to do it by hand. But I'm also going to show you how to do things with the calculator. So the first thing I want to talk about what makes this sometimes confusing is the fact that there are multiple angles. There's actually an infinite number of angles that have the same sine value or cosine value or trig or tangent value. Watch just to show you. Um, what's the sine of 30? Well, we know that that's one half, but the calculator will tell you that it's also 0.5, and that's because Sine is the y-coordinate, and we can see that it's one-half. But what if we were to take the sine of 390? We see that it's also 0.5. What if we were to take the sine of 150? It's also 0.5. So with all these different values, when you're working backwards, which one are you going to pick? And that's what this video is going to be about, because we know that 390 degrees is just a coterminal angle that'll bring you right back to 30. And we know that the sine of 30 um, is obviously right here, but 150 has a 30 degree reference angle. And up here, notice that we have a negative positive. So sine is still positive on the top. Um, so what we're going to do is quickly refresh your memory about what's positive in each quadrant. And then, of course, in terms of tangent, remember, we're just dividing. So when you work backwards, I'm going to show you how to use your graphing calculator to double check your answer. But you have to be able to do this by hand as well. So. The first question is the sine of theta is the square root of 3 over 2. The square root of 3 over 2 we can find right here at our y value because sine is y. So we have 60 degrees. But y is also positive over here at 120 degrees because that's also a 60 degree reference angle. So do you pick the one in quadrant one or quadrant two? Well, the rule is you want to take the shortest distance from zero. So the shortest distance from zero is 60 degrees. And since we're supposed to be listing these in both degrees and radians, that would be the equivalent of pi over three. So how do you check that with your calculator? You just use inverse trig. You just press second sine and then you just type in the square root of 3 and you divide that by 2 click enter and it's gonna tell you that it's 60 degrees okay so your graphing calculator can do this for you but remember we want to take the shortest path to the answer okay uh, let's do another one we're gonna go with cosine of square root of 2 over 2. So cosine is x. So again, the first three examples here you're going to see are all going to be in quadrant 1. So if cosine is x, where are we going to find a value of the square root of 2 over 2 in the x value? And the answer to that is 45 degrees. So we just have to look. Remember, if you have quadrant 1 memorized, it's really easy. Here's our x value. So the answer is 45 degrees also pi over 4 if you're not sure use your calculator if you're allowed to second cosine of the square root of 2 divided by 2 and you're gonna get 45 and of course the radian equivalent is pi over 4 so one last one in quadrant 1 would be tangent is the square root of 3 over 3 and we can see right here that's a 30 degree angle also known as pi over 6. So, when we are looking 
for a theta or an angle measurement of a positive ratio, we are always going to pick quadrant one. Okay, so now we need to talk about what are we going to do if it's negative. So where is sine of theta negative? So sine, remember, is our y value. So if sine is negative, we're looking for y values that are negative. That's both quadrants 3 and 4. So which one are we going to pick if we're going to do a negative 1 half? Again, the rule is you take the shortest path. So if 1 half is our y value at 30 degree reference angles, then we technically have an answer right here and right there. So which one do you pick? Now I know you're thinking that you're probably going to pick 210, which is 30 degrees past 180. But the actual answer is negative 30 degrees. You don't believe me? Press second sign of negative 0.5 or one half you could have typed and it's going to tell you negative 30. Remember what I said you need to take the shortest path. If you go all the way this way that's much longer than if you were to just go negative 30 degrees. So remember shortest path you learned how to graph negative angles those count as well in terms of inverse trig. So then, of course, this would be negative pi over 6 for our rating, radian value. Okay? Now, cosine. Cosine has two different values where we have a negative root 3 over 2 as well. Now, negative root 3 over 2 is our x value we're looking for. So we have the square root of 3 over 2. So we're going to be at 30 degree reference angles again. But cosine is x, so x is negative here and here. So you're asking, which one do you pick for this? Well, you could go two different directions and the same distance. So whenever that's the case, you pick the positive one. So you want to pick 150 degrees for this one. Again, it's a 30-degree reference angle. So this guy is 150, this guy is 210. So you pick... 150. This is also negative 150, but again, you pick the positive one when possible. Um, so what we're going to do with that guy is double check in our calculator just so you can see. So we're going to do second cosine of negative square root of 3 divided by 2, and you get the 150. And of course, you have to make sure you list the radian value, which is also 5 pi over 6. And again, some of you might be wondering how I just got that. Well, remember, it's a pi over 6 reference angle. If 30 degrees is pi over 6, then pi over 6 away from 6 pi over 6 is 5 pi over 6. But if you forgot how to do that, remember, you can always just use your radian conversion factor, which is to multiply by pi over 180. change to a fraction, you still get it that way. So again, if you're allowed to use your calculator, use it. If not, this is what you need to think, be thinking about in terms of reference angles if you know quadrant one. Last example, tangent. So just because tangent is sine over cosine, you follow the rules of sine. So sine is going to be negative down here. Okay, sine is negative down here. Cosine is negative over here, so is tangent, but since it's sine over cosine, you follow the numerator, so you follow the rules of sine. So if tangent is negative, it's going to be in one of these two, but sine is negative where y is negative. So negative 1, so we're going to be over here. Tangent is 1 at 45, so you need to go 45 degrees down into quadrant 4, so that's going to be Remember, negative 45 degrees and negative pi over 4. Do not pick 315. Um, you have to make sure you take the shortest distance. Okay? So, that's inverse trig for you. Of course, if you're allowed to use your calculator, just use your calculator. But if you have to do it by hand and you know quadrant 1, just think in terms of reference angles. 
Okay, that's it for this video. This is Longo and I'm out. See you, bye.